interest going up. February December needs to raise interest rates. Oh, the job market data is so strong. February December needs to raise more interest rates. But the bond markets are pricing in a completely different scenario. The bond markets are pricing in a rate cuts. In this video, we're gonna go over what happened with the payrolls data, which caused the market to rally 3%. Shouldn't rally. The jobs data was hotter than expected, which makes Fed increase the interest rates. On this end, we have Federal Reserve. They want to keep raising interest rates as long as they bring the inflation down to the medium target of 2%. On the other hand, the bond markets are pricing in rate cuts by end of 2023. Who is right and who is wrong? Looking back to the history, the Federal Reserve has always been wrong. They've never been right. But, but it's Putin's fault we had inflation. <sighs> Last month, we had the same labor data, which was showing hotter than expected job markets and the job markets wasn't cooling down. This month, we had the same jobs data with stronger than expected uh, employment rates, but the market rallied. This is when you dive a bit deeper. If you go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website and click on the non-form payrolls report, and if you read into it, if you scroll all the way down, you will see a tab called wage inflation. The markets like the news that the wage inflation came in less harder than the analyst estimates because God forbid the employers got to pay employers more. And then they started going crazy. The yield sold off, the dollar sold off, and the markets ripped higher. Oh Mario, who was right and who was wrong? I believe the bond markets are right. In the last FOMC minutes, we saw that the Federal Reserve has the target of 2% by end of 2024. I believe we're going to reach the 2% even more earlier than that. I believe the inflation is going to come down more rapidly than they're expecting and which might cause them to pivot in the first place. And this is where we mark the bottom at least for a temporary basis in the stock market. This was my thesis leading into 2023. That's why I'm bullish on bonds. That's why I'm bullish on gold. That's why I'm bullish on silver and bearish on US dollar leading into 2023. This might happen in the second half or this might happen after the first half is over. We'll never know. We've got to wait and see. How will I know I'm wrong? I will know I'm wrong if I see the inflation picking up and then changing the trajectory and start moving to the upside. If that happens, we're looking at a stagflationary environment rather than deflationary. But the way that things are looking at right now, I'm more inclined to the deflationary theory. Now, the main question is, where to from here? If you guys enjoyed the content, leave a like. Subscribe. Most of you guys who are watching this channel haven't been subscribed to me yet. Oh Mario, maybe they don't want to see your ugly ass face. Shut the fuck up. Enough about the macro. At the end of the day, knowing macro is good, but we all know price is the only thing that pays. So let's go on to the technical analysis of SPY and QQQ and see what to expect leading into next week. So let's go over the daily charts of SPY and see what to expect leading into next week. Before even beginning the charting, I want you guys to do two things. Go ahead and find the lows which was made by SPY on October 13th of 2022. If you click on the arrow over here next to the trend line on trading view, you'll find something called anchored VWAP. Select that, click on that big candle from October 13th and you'll get the VWAP from there. And then go to Jan 3rd, which was the first trading session of 2023 and click on the anchored VWAP and then click on that candle. You'll get another AVWAP from the 2023 trading session. This will come in handy leading into the upcoming months. So you can clearly see the range on SPY was between 385.50 to 386 all the way to 380 to 378.50 down south. We've been doing that back and forth dance for almost two weeks now until last Friday where they broke out. So now you can see regardless of how much they moved to the upside, they always got rejected at one place which was this AV map from that October 13 lows. Now if you head over to the 30 minute charts, the significance of that AV map is even more clear. So leading into Monday, if they come back to run a test to this AV map at around 385.39, I will be looking for SPY to run a test to 387 and 390 one more time. 
The 390 level is one of the strongest resistances when it comes to SPY. We do have a bunch of economic data leading into next week, especially CPI, and Powell is talking on Tuesday. If market uses these things as an excuse to push the tape higher, the next important level comes in at 393.70. In about 393.70, we can go all the way to run a test to that downward sloping trend line which is coming all the way from all time highs again at around 400 and change. For now, they were trading in a range and then they broke out of it. The only thing which is concerning me at this moment is if you go to ES which is the continuous S&P 500 futures contracts, you can see they are actually still in that range. SPY is the only thing which actually broke out, ES didn't. The range in ES is 39.18 all the way down to 38.05. ES never broke above it. What if it's just another bull trap when they open under this level on Monday and they just continue to fall down lower all the way to run a test to 38.30 again? Or the AV wrap at 38.75? Equally possible scenario. So leading into Monday, we are under one of the strongest resistance levels which is at 390 when it comes to spy so as long as they're under it i would rather be cautious if they break above it there is another strong resistance at 393.50 if they break above it we will talk about bullish cases all the way to 400 and 402. 390 was held as a strong support multiple times over and over again previously for the past few weeks now that level is going to be acting as a resistance leading into upcoming weeks. If market used these events as an excuse to gap up higher, well, we'll take it from there. The bullish, the most bullish case leading into next week will be SPY testing that downward sloping trend line at 400. So what is the bearish case? Bearish case will be SPY losing this AB wrap at 385 again and then starting to close candles under it. If that's the case, we are looking at SPY to run a test to this higher lows, a series of higher lows which has been creating all the way from December 2022 through this trend line, which currently shows up at around 381.55 or 380 to the downside. To put it simple, as long as the price stays about 385.68, which was that AV VAP from that 52 week low of SPY 348, I'm bullish. If they lose it, I'll be expecting the same consolidation and same chop chop markets again. The range will be again from 380 to 385.50 until proven otherwise. I recommend you all to add this AVWAP to your charts. AVWAP is one of the most significant tools which has helped me a lot. You can see in my chart I don't have any other indicators other than ATR and the AVWAP and just the price. These two alone tells you what you need to know. As always, Take high probability trades, manage the risk wisely. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.